Hello, boys and girls. I'm Pearl of Wisdom, and you're listening to my NHL Pearls of Wisdom. And today, we are going to be looking at free agency, which is coming up in days. We already did Forsberg. We had the team we had most, second most likely for him to go to was the National Predator. That's where he went to. In the draft, we had Debrinkat, and the second most likely team we had him going to in our trade video, you can check it out, was Ottawa. That was a month before it actually happened. Uh, we hit these quite a bit. We did, we have, we just did a Pooley Harvey video. You might want to check that out. Although the audio was a little off, so you're going to have to get some headphones or something, but I figured it out. I think the audio now, and we're going to go rock this Colorado Avalanche. Cadre. Gonna look at a couple articles, like we do in most of these. Uh, you know, I'm just not talking out of my butt here. There's a few people out there that are saying a lot of things, insiders and all that. So we're gonna take a look at the insiders and what they got to say. Um, some of these things I do project, rather than having any insider information. Like I never heard anybody having to bring that going to Ottawa, but I, it just made sense. So we look at logic because of my, I have a, a I, I watch and listen to and pay attention to a divorce worthy amount of hockey information and TV. So in that, I seem to have a bit of a gift to be able to come up with where things may, ha what may happen. We're going to look at seven teams that Kadri may go to and how much he's going to get. And what his term might be. Uh, we'll also look at the possibility of Colorado resigning him. And we'll look at the possibility of Colorado not resigning him. So, let's look at the uh, articles and questions. This is all part of the Steel Flyers All Sports Network. Can't wait for free agents coming up. And sub yourself up so you can be part of this fine frolic on a regular basis. There we go. There's the article in question. One of the articles in question is from Sportsnet. Audrey wants to return to the Avalanche, which says, I've shown what my worth is. So just in the title alone, lot, most players want to go back to the play, team that they played for. They're never going to say, I don't want to be here. Seldom, unless there's a real big falling out and then you don't even need to speculate. They're certainly going to be out. There's no falling out with Nazem Kadri. But he is saying, I know what, his wor what I, my worth is. So he is saying, I'm not looking to get a discount here. All right? And to tell you the honest truth, Joe Sackett, he tries to find players that money is not their number one thing. He's, he's obvious. Seems to be that's the case because he gets incredible contracts at a lot of his players that are out there. Like, McKinnon right now, and we'll take a look at that, how his contract looks, and, and uh, like his hey, Colorado is some of the best contracts out there. Uh, Audrey turns 32 just days before the puck drops next season, coming off of, this by Sportsnet, by the way, 4.5 million cap hit. Final year of his contract might have been this best bet. 28 goals and 87 points in his last year. In the end, he had a great playoffs as well before he had a thumb in. The Avalanche have a number of decisions to make with only seven forwards and one goalie under the contract. So they got to sign a lot of free agents and they have to decide whether Kadri is going to fit in. And we're going to look at whether Kadri is going to look in, look to fit in, or even if he can, is it something that Saka could even do in the first place? The other one we have here, which is kind of a continuation, comes from great public SB Nation. So it basically says sort of the same thing. Salary cap is what the odds can do in free agency. Valery Nichuskin's going to have to be signed. Seems likely too expensive. Presumably Colorado's priorities. They got Lekkinen, the Chuskin, 
Josh Manson that they might want to sign, Darren Helm, uh, Andre Burakovsky doesn't look like he's going to be back. At this point, talks between Andre Burakovsky, yes, it hasn't, not happening. But they have a lot, and they have McKinnon to sign next year. So this just kind of goes over some of the, staying in Colorado, Nuchuskin at 5.75, Lekkinen at 4.5. If Burakovsky were to stay there, it would be two years at 5.5. I think those are pretty accurate. And then you got to figure if, Nazim Kadri, and we'll look at Nazim Kadri there. We already mentioned he's 30. From London, Ontario, that's going to be important as we look at the 17th that he may go to. Um, but his overall career up until now is what I really want to look at here. 87 points in 71 games in his final year. Red flag of a contract here. Another red flag. Didn't have a year like this until he hit 31 years of age. The reason why I say that's a red flag is he kind of gave his value of what he is up until this time. More often than not, players that hit pay dirt do well on contract time. They put everything aside. They give it 100% because they know they're going to cash in big. And usually when they do that late in their careers, they never reduplicate it again. So there's a pretty good chance that may happen. Joe Sackick is one of the best GMs in the league. In fact, this year, he was selected the best executive in the league. Now, he's no longer GM, actually. He got promoted. And um, McCrimmon, McKimmon, I can't remember. McDermott is going to be taking his spot. A guy that they've been waiting on for a while, and they decided to go this way. So they didn't lose him to maybe other organizations that were looking for general managers. So, Mark Guy, great at contracts, has some incredible contracts. In Col they have incredible contracts in Colorado. That, And I just don't see him taking a chance like this on some of the players that they have. There. Look at this. They have Landis gone. At seven million till two thousand twenty nine. That's an incredible contract. Nathan McKinnon at six three. Now he's gonna be going up into next year to something. He could get thirteen million if he wanted to. Branton in at nine four till two thousand twenty five or nine two. Look, these are beautiful contracts. Sackick's not one to just throw money around all the muck. And I don't think he's going to do it with Codgers. The the reason why they have Alex Newhook, who had 33 points as a 21 year old, great two way player last year, played well in the playoffs, and it's going to be his time soon. Not to mention they have J T. Comfer there, who isn't really your classic second line center, but he can fill the role. It's not like Colorado's going to miss the playoffs next year if Kadri takes off to another team and they can work on their second line center spot. Either if, if New Hook can't accomplish it and, and take and nail it down, they can look at the trade deadline. There's lots of options. So I, I really don't think they're going to put all that much money on Kadri. Although they say they'd like to. Of course they'd like to. Who wouldn't? Kadri is a very good player, but for that kind of money in turn, I don't see. So let's look at some teams that may decide that they want to do something like that. The Philadelphia Flyers to start off with. I take the Philadelphia Flyers here, and I know Philadelphia fans, the first thing you're saying is impossible. We don't have any cap space. I gotcha. Certainly looks like that right off the get-go. Uh, because I think they have like a billion. If that. Person you probably think that not even 118,000. So, how are you going to do it? Hello, what possibly could you do? Well, I'm hearing that Van Reemsdyk is almost for sure out. They're going to staple a pick to him or a prospect. They don't have many, but they've already put themselves in the position that they're going for it now, whatever it is. I think they can actually. They hired Tortorella. 
You're not hiring Tortorella to rebuild. That's not what he's doing. He's too old to be worrying about that kind of stuff. And Anthony D'Angelo was signed for $5 million for two years. He's a relatively young guy, but this isn't a rebuild move. Plus, you have Ellis that they picked up last year. Um, they have no, it doesn't look like they're heading towards trading Cam Atkinson. You got Kevin Hayes at 30 years old. And they've actually came out and said that, uh, Chuck Fletcher has come out and said that he didn't think he needed a total rebuild here. Just a reset, grab a couple players and go. Well, if you're going to do that, find yourself a place for James Van Rien. Like sign Caudry. Caudry is, I think, what they're going for here in Philadelphia. Guys with attitude. Let's face it, that's what the Philadelphia legend has been. And it hasn't been for a while. I talk to Philadelphia fans all the time because Philadelphia is one of my teams in the East and they want that attitude. And I'll tell you, Philadelphia and their sponsors want what people want. And you know what? I want it to. If you're going to lose, at least lose with attitude, right? Well, bringing in Kadri certainly does that. And then you have a top three that ain't too shabby. I don't know how what they're going to do with uh, and who was going to play the left side with Van Riemsdyk there. You know, maybe keep on throwing Isaac Ratcliffe out there or say, uh, Wade Allison if he can come back from his injury issues. Um, or maybe, you know, you look through the year for another person to, to put in that spot. But you got Oscar Limblom, Hayes, and Tippett, maybe something like that. Lawton, Caudry, and Connecting. Couturier, Atkinson, and X on the left side. I don't know exactly who. Maybe Noah Cates. He didn't do too bad. It's not a bad top nine now. It's almost something that can make the playoffs top nine. And who knows what you get there. Porterell is killer at getting the best out of goaltenders. They sure need that. Because if Carter Hart does what Carter Hart can do, they all, you always got a chance when you got a goaltender that plays out of their head. So tell me what you think, Philadelphia Flyers fans. Audrey, yes, it's going to be a long time. Yes, not a smart move. I don't think it's a smart move, but I don't think anything Philadelphia is all that smart. So, but if you're going to be not smart and not rebuild, you better go for it the right way. And if you're not caring about the future, which it doesn't appear they are, Audrey is your guy. Me. All right. Pittsburgh Penguins, believe it or not, right across the pond. And by the way, this is sort of in order here. Philadelphia wasn't high on the list, but I think it's a possibility. I think they'll be on the phone. And Pittsburgh, too. Pittsburgh is another team that you can't really get a handle on if they're rebuilding, not rebuilding. Uh, you know, they did pick up some draft picks this year. It just seems like they're going to keep their picks and try to have the best team they can until they really, really, really suck. But it doesn't look like Melkin's going to pass. I don't know what Melkin was asking for. But he did have a lot of injury issues, and it doesn't mean they don't want to be good because it doesn't look, you know, they signed Brian Russ to a significant contract. They still have Gunsel there. Uh, I don't know what's going to happen with Zucker, but he comes off the books. But the fact of the matter is, believe it or not, Pittsburgh has quite a bit of cap space. And they could find a center. I do believe they will try to find a center out there. I'm not sure that Kadri is the best bet, but for 15 million cap space, it all depends on who's willing to come. You know, like if you don't have anybody else, I don't think this Pittsburgh roster can go the way they are right now. They have money to sign Raquel. Sorry about that. They have money to sign Raquel, uh, who is an unrestricted right now. And they have money to sign Rodriguez. And they have money to sign Kadri. You could sign probably all three of those guys and still be under the cap. Give, what, $4 million to Raquel and $4 million to Rodriguez, something of that nature. I don't know if Raquel's going to do that. He might test the market. Maybe he does get a little more out there and they got to look at another direction. 
But let's say they do. Rodriguez and Raquel. You got your right and your left. Raquel can play right and left. Put them between Kadri and we got Gunsel, Crosby, and Russ. That's not a bad top six. Carter comes down here and plays with uh, in the center position, and Drew O'Connor can play left wing where like he's supposed to with Luru. That's a killer third line. Pittsburgh just has that mystique. They just have that system that as long as they got guys to play all the positions, they can do damage. I wouldn't doubt it. I wouldn't doubt it. I think, you know, Caudry's attitude and everything would work out there in Pittsburgh. I don't think it's the best chance, but I'm putting it in here because I think they will be interested. I certainly think they'll be going for another center. Tell me what you think. Sub yourself up, Pittsburgh Penguins fans. Comment in the comment section and tell me what you think about this idea. All right, next, the Detroit Red Wings. And I'm putting the Detroit Red Wings here for a couple reasons, and I'm putting them a little higher than Pittsburgh and Philadelphia for a couple reasons. One, they could definitely use a second-line center. Pia Suter is a decent dude, but second-line center, he's just filling in a role right now until somebody can take over. And I know Detroit fans are going to be like, well, we're building, let's use our kids. Hate to tell you this, but... You don't really have anybody in the system that could be ready. That's probably going to be ready to be a second line center next year. I like Bergen, but he's probably not there yet. As far as prospects are concerned, Marco Casper that you just drafted, not likely going to be ready. Uh, James Dillon was a second round pick this year. He's probably not going to be a dead. I do like Niederbach, he's t but he's only 20 years old. Most of these guys are still a couple years away. So, I'm hearing that Detroit is getting a little restless in the missing the playoffs aspect. So hear me out. Not only here, just, Kadri does a few things that I think caused a problem for Detroit last year. They did really well to start the season, but they faded down the stretch. That usually has a lot to do with conditioning, strength, all of that. Kadri is solid in all those areas and can help these kids be able to maintain throughout a season. Also, commitment. kadri has got it. Do they need a cup in the room? Looks like it to me. Where's the cup in the room here? They don't have anybody here to say, hey, this is what it means. This is how you win a Stanley Cup. And he brings an aspect that, you know, Tyler Bertuzzi kind of brings, kind of bratish. But he just brings this accountability factor into Detroit where he can say, I've done it, yo. I've done it. It's one thing for maybe other players on this team to say, do this, do that. We know you want you to do this or even the coach. It's another thing completely to have a guy here and say, listen to the coach. I've done it. This is how we do it. I think possibly for the right price, Seven and a half, and I think Detroit could go a little lower than most other teams here because, and I brought this up when they started the video, Kadri's from London, Ontario, which isn't far from Detroit. So he's closer to home. You might get a bit of a homer discount here. All right? Hopefully Stevie Eisenman's one of his idols too. That helps out. Tell me what you think, Detroit fans. Do you think you need a guy like Kadri there to create a ruckus and bring some accountability? I know it's going to be tough down the road because of his, you know, aging contract, but maybe you can convince him to have a moderate no trade clause for the last three years or something of that nature. Maybe he goes off and he's just a really late bloomer and keeps on flying the way he's been flying right now. But, I think it's a pretty decent option. Tell me, sub yourself up. Tell me what you think. Have a great, okay, next. Have a great day. I'm not even close to done yet. All right. Calgary Flames. This, I have the Calgary Flames in here because I think if Johnny Goudreau decides he's not going to be coming back, they're going to be desperate to put something in to, to, to build this roster. I don't think they're going to say, okay, screw it, we're done. Just not the Calgary way. 
They're going to keep on building, keep on building. They're going to, have, they have an identity there. And it just so happens Kadri fits that identity. Just that bulldog mentality and, uh, never get, never, never back down. That's what Calgary wants to build. And that's the type of players they have. Lindholm, Kachuk, Coleman they brought in. Sutter as a coach is like that anyways. I think Kadri would do well with Sutter because he's not the best defensively. And Sutter would help him a lot that way. As far as going to Calgary, why Kadri would go to Calgary? They may have to pay a little more for him to get him to go to Canada. I, maybe not though. Because Kadri comes from, is just played in Colorado. A beautiful place with beautiful mountains. Calgary is a beautiful place that's very close to beautiful mountains. I would even say more impressive mountains, to tell you the honest truth. Banff, Alberta, which is not very far away from Calgary, like 25-minute drive, is absolutely stunning. Stunning. Incredible place to live. And as long as you can handle the cold, Colorado's got cold. Calgary's not that as cold as a lot of places in Canada and the West, like Edmonton. It's not too bad. And for the right money, he has a right, he has an option here to, he's going to be a second line center. Um, not too many people going to take him away, take him away from that job there. And Calgary loves veterans. They just bring in veterans constantly all the time. They have Toffoli there. Uh, they have Lucic. They have, uh, you know, they bring in guys like that to help their young guys all the time. Backlund, Michael Backlund's been there. Michael Backlund's been there long enough that he really shouldn't be a second-line center anymore. So you put him down to the third-line center position. you got Kachuk, Lindholm, and Toffoli, Mangiopani, Kadri, and Coleman. Not a fun line to play against right there, I'll tell you that right now. And uh, then you can put Backlund down in the second-line uh, third line center spot with help the kid out with Pelche and Dubé or something of that nature. And you got a pretty killer, you got not a bad top, top nine here, even though the Goudreau left. What do you think, Calgary fans? Uh, do you think Caudry would be a good fit for you? I know he's going to play there till he's late in his years, but to tell you the honest truth, Calgary's win now. If you don't win now, what are you going to do? Like, there's going to be a rebuild in the future anyways. So that's going to be, it's going to be. Having him later doesn't change that. Winning now, if that's, that's what they want to do. Without Goudreau, I think there's not too many options out there. Caudry's one of them. You just had 80-some points. If you can keep that rolling, you're not looking too shabby. Sub yourself up to my channel. Tell me what you think, Calgary fans. About Having Kadri there. Next, New York Rangers. And I have the New York Rangers here because it's rumored so much that they're going for a veteran second line center. I don't really get it. I think Philip Hedl is had a great playoffs, and I would probably keep on rolling with him. Um, I think for cap space reasons, as much as I know a lot of you out there are going to say this, Lafreniere is going to need uh, is Lafreniere is going to need a, another contract. Going to need a contract uh, soon once he gets off of his entry level contract. Uh, Capo Caco is going to need one if they decide to keep rolling with him. But I'm hearing it for, in on Dubois, in on Miller, in on Cadre. Out of those ones, only one of them has a cup on their their mantle, and he just got it, and that's Kadri. You don't have to give anything back. They go after a Dubois. He has no cup. You got to give. You got to give stuff back. You go after Miller. You're going to have to give a lot, of, lot back. You take a Kadri. You're rolling, man. I, I have a, and, and not only that. Drury seems to love these kind of guys. They went out and got, he, they, you know, once they hired Drury, 
He put his philosophy in right away. He brought in Ryan Reeves. He brought in Barclay Gutro, who I think is overpaid. Uh, he traded for uh, Bushnevich for uh, Bl Sammy Blay. I mean, these are just board hounding players that, you know, they have their place, but I wouldn't put that much stock onto them, but he puts a lot of stock into it. Kadri is a guy who plays like those guys, but he also just got 87 points. So I wouldn't doubt that he's interested, no doubt about that. Now, I'm with you. I know a lot of you are going to say, what do you, we got to sign Kako. You know, we got to sign Lafreniere next year. Look at their cap space. You got cap space you got to worry about. Now, of course, Girardi and Shattenkirk is coming off next year, so that's going to help. But you only got $10 million this year. They got 23 next year. But like you said, you got to sign all those players. You got to sign all those young players, and you're going to put him in there. I have a feeling they're going to do I Like, I have a feeling, strong feeling that Drury wants to win now and he'll worry about other players later, but certainly guys with an attitude like Kadri, he values to such an extent. You got Keandre Miller, that's the other one. That's going to be a big one. Braden Schneider eventually. I mean, got filling out your roster as far as you got to get a backup goaltender now. I got you. I got all that. I get it. No doubt about it. But Kadri won a cup. He brings a hate to this team. He brings a hate to this team. And I just get the idea, get the feeling that Drury wants as much of that as possible. Tell me what you think, Rangers fans. First of all, do you think I, do you agree with me with what I believe of Drury? Do you, second of all, do you believe what, do you agree with what Drury is doing? And how much do you like Kadri in this spot? Sub yourself up to my channel. Tell me in the comment section. I'll talk to you. Next, Boston Bruins. I know you have no cap space. I got you. $2 million in cap space. We can't do it. Blah, 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 blah. You know what? When a team loves a player, they'll make the room cap-wise. And there's ways to do that here. They could trade Eric Hola. Hola. Uh, find a place for him. There's probably a place for him at 2.3, somewhere out there. You're not going to need him if you pick up Kadri. Uh, you know, Bergeron also has to come in, and he's going to have to be signed, so there's, there's even more room that's going to have to be made. Now, Marshawn's not going to be coming back until, like, halfway through the season or December or something. And that $6 is not going to count right away. So they could sign him to about seven and a half for six or seven years, and I know that pushes him to like he's 37, 38. But let's face it, Boston's window is completely right now. It is shutting super fast. And they probably will have to rebuild. Maybe because he's from Toronto, which isn't far away from Boston, from that area, they can get him to have at least a, a moderate no trade clause for the last three years. And they'll be able to get value for him at that time. Maybe depending on the price. If Krejci doesn't come in, which we're hearing that he could or could not, but I don't know, I'm just assuming he's not here by doing this video, I think they could be very interested. And honestly, what else are you going to do? You're going to sit and say, okay, well, we need to get younger. Well, you're not, are you? You're not getting younger. That's the thing. They went and got, it's just not what they're doing. If they're going to keep going for it, which is appear what they're going to do, I think they're going to need a better second line center than Eric Holla. Now they could go, you could say, well, okay, we can get Trocek or we can get this. Maybe you can. I, like we can't just pluck them and then say, oh, by the way, Mr. Trocek, we, we, we're signing you to a free, free agent, as a free agent right now. It, he's like, no, no, I'm not. I got, I want to go somewhere else. I want to go to this place, that place. So, if there's nowhere else to go, there's nowhere else to go. And imagine Kadri and Marshawn. Kadri plays the Boston way. He plays the Bruins way. I think that's really what I'm trying to get. At. I think they're going to love this because 
Marshawn and Kadri on the same team, man? Who's going to want to go into Boston with those two? Right? Who's going to want to play Boston? And that's what Boston is. They hate to play against. They never back down. They never give up. Kadri is all of that and more as long as he doesn't do things stupid. And it seems like he's got past that part of his life. So, bio Nick Felino. Trade Halla. Find a place for Derek Forbert. Do whatever you got to do. And you got time to do it because Marshawn's not coming back. McAvoy might not be there to start the season. Not to mention, you got to be good to get into the playoffs to start the season. If these guys are all going to be injured, you need some players. So, I, I just... I just, I just think they'll bite on it. I really do. If they have the op option, if the possibility is there, I think Boston would bite on this. So tell me what you think, Boston fans, in the comment section. Sub yourself up to my channel. You got to go over. If you're watching on Facebook, go over to YouTube, search Pearl of Wisdom, sub up. I want to hear from you. I do lives too. I'm doing a live stream tomorrow night. Uh, you can come and join me and talk to me there too. Say whatever you want, by the way. You know, you, you don't even have to be respectful. I, I, I honestly, I don't care. This is hockey. Talk to me like we're talking hockey. If we're on the ice, I'm a big boy. I can handle it. I'm a hockey player. I'm a hockey fan. You want to talk crap to each other? Cool. But once it's over, I'll shake your hand and we'll move on just like we do in hockey. All right, next and my final one, the team I like the most for Kadri is the Nashville Predators. Why the Nashville Predators? Well, first of all, they actually have some cap room. They have about $9 million in cap space, I believe. Yes, $9 million in cap space. I do this right off the top of my head, by the way. Uh, I think you can probably figure that out by now. <laughs> they just went out and got McDonough from Tampa Bay. Why? McDonough's got cup show. He's a veteran to solidify their defense. They didn't do that to rebuild. This team is trying to be the best they can be to try to win a cup. Do I think they have the team to win a cup? Eh, man, oh, man. I, I, I mean, when you think about the Colorados and Tampas, it's hard to picture it. But if if they're going to, adding depth like Kadri would be the way to go about it. Uh, also, Kadri plays the way Nashville plays. Kadri is a warrior, a battler. And this team wins by doing that. They actually faded down the stretch because they played maybe too much like that through the regular season. But when you watch it, if you go into Nashville or you play Nashville, expect to fight. Expect to battle. Expect to get abused in every way possible. That is what they do. And Kadri is all that and more and has a cup on his mantle on top of it. I know he's going to be older. I know that down the road that contract's not going to be great, but I don't really think Nashville's worried about down the road right now with picks up pickups of, of Ryan McDonough. His contract's probably not going to look that great down the road. This team is in now mode, win now mode. And Kadri, I think, does a lot to keep them in that mode. Now, for this, when I say depth for Nashville, you got Forsberg, Granlin, Duchesne. Let's keep the lines just the way they are. Toivonen, Johansson, Tomasino. You say, where does Kadri fit in? Right here. Tanner Jeannot, Kadri, and Sissons on the right side. I'll tell you, I would not want to be – I would loathe the idea of having to go up against that line. Tanner know is a pest like you wouldn't want to believe. You put Kadri and Sissons – they will hound you all freaking game, man. You are going to be exhausted by the end of that game between their mouth and the way they, everything that they do to get you off your game. That would be absolutely cray cray. And they'll knock you out, uh, knock it out of the park for points. They're good point producers. Not bad for what they do. 
Kadri obviously had 87 points last year. That line would be insane. And you got you you then as the opposition has to figure out who they want to put their best guy, best guys out against. You want to put it against Granlin, Forsberg, and Duchesne. Okay, you got Eli Torbinen who started to pick it up pretty well, not bad last year. Johansson and Philip Tomasino. He's going to be a gem. I love that guy. You got him to contend with, and if you can cover those, then you have Geno. You have like every single line is going to be able to hurt you. All three lines. And even the fourth line, when you get Trent in, I don't know about Cody Glass, but I'm sure they got some young guys that they can fill in some spots here. Uh, they got Leonard from San Jose. He plays a pretty rough game. This is a pretty solid lineup if you put Kadri in there. So Nashville fans, tell me what you got to say about that. And everybody, tell me what you think about what we talked about here today. Sub yourself up to my channel. And uh, we'll talk. Oh, we will talk. Let me tell you right now. That's me on the fly. Nazim Kadri, free agency, coming up in two days. Can't wait. Here's a little Perla dance for you out. Okay, bye.